This tariff face-off between President Trump and America's most faithful and long-standing allies has taken a testy turn. Sources say the president had a contentious phone call with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau over the tariffs uh, that the administration is putting on Canada's steel and aluminum. According to sources, Trudeau pressed Trump on how he could justify the tariffs as a quote-unquote national security issue. And this was President Trump's response, quoting him, didn't you guys burn down the White House? referring to the War of 1812. Uh, however, once again, President Trump got his history uh, a bit wrong. That arson was actually referring to the, the one committed by the British, and it was done in retaliation for an attack on land that ultimately became part of Canada. But what is accurate is this, that the White House assertion that the aluminum and steel tariffs are to improve U.S. security, a, a concept Trudeau's foreign minister has really criticized. So what you are saying to us and to all of your NATO allies is that we somehow represent a national security threat to the United States. And I would just say to all of Canada's American friends, and there are so many, seriously? <laughs> Let's talk this over with CNN National Security Analyst Julie Kayam, former Assistant Secretary for Homeland Security, and CNN political commentator Catherine Rampell, who's a columnist for The Washington Post. Ladies. Good to have both of you on. And, and Juliet, just starting with you, I mean, uh, it, it's one thing to cite national security with Russia, China, uh, especially everything that's going on with ZTE, but but Canada? Can you explain that for me? Uh, yeah, well, I'll quote the, the Canadian for Mr. Yo, seriously, it's, it's, it's so um, shocking uh, that I guess one has to laugh. Uh, Canada has done more to help uh, support uh, America's national security efforts than most other countries, whether it's on border security, counterterrorism, or of course the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. But even putting that aside, it's very dangerous for the White House to utilize a national security exception, which is meant to be utilized in, in instances like what you said, China and Russia, as a sort of carve out to protect American interests against enemies. To use it so willy nilly as a means to justify an economic policy that uh, that, um, uh, you know, that should be judged in and of itself. So ba basically, the United States, the Trump administration, is utilizing an exception or a justification uh, because they cannot justify the tariffs on economic grounds because everyone knows uh, that the Canadians and the, and, the, and the economic policy are not harming the United States. I Julia made this point, and Catherine, I want to give you credit because you've been making this point with me for a while, and others are, are jumping on. Just in turn, you said it a second ago that you don't, you know, you don't enforce national security by alienating your military partners. And I just want to hit this point home. Canada's own government website says, "quote The United States is Canada's most important ally and defense partner, and more than 40,000 Canadian forces have served in Afghanistan with the U.S. from 01 to 2014." So, what's this about? How damaging, how, how long lasting would the damage be? I think the damage is, is tremendous to our relationship with Canada specifically, to our economic situation uh, in the near term and, and potentially in the long term. Look, it seems like the tortured logic Trump is trying to use here is that if for some reason we needed to ramp up uh, steel production, we need and steel and aluminum production, that Canada wouldn't be friendly enough to actually help us out there, that they would uh, cut off those supplies. Well, maybe this is a self-fulfilling prophecy here, right? If, if we do enough to damage our relationship with our friends, yeah, maybe they won't cooperate with us in our, in our hour of need. And this is so... Um, ill-advised for, for reasons beyond national security, of course, right? It's not only that, it's that there are lots of American jobs that count um, on getting steel and aluminum as inputs to, to manufacture other kinds of finished products, and now those inputs are getting more expensive, putting those jobs at risk. We're now facing retaliation from Canada, Mexico, the EU, uh, not to mention lots of other places. On retaliation from Mexico, they, the, they have slapped back on the tariffs. They have um, slapped more than three billion dollars worth in american goods in tariffs um after the imposed tariffs from the trump administration last week it you you, you keep saying this is like these are the opening salvo of a trade war this seems like a trade war 
who does this hurt the most? It hurts Americans, right? I mean, when you think about it, we have put this tariff basically on countries worldwide, meaning that our costs are going up and we're slapping them across the board. Um, and every other country is hurting a little bit from this. But then these other countries, when they retaliate, they can be much more strategic. They can choose products that will hurt us the most because they're produced in politically sensitive areas. Kentucky bourbon, uh, Harley, -David Harley Davidson motorcycles in Wisconsin, for example, that will hurt us the most that maybe they have alternative suppliers for. So we have done this so unstrategically on so many levels mm -hmm. that basically we are hurting American consumers and potentially American workers way more than we're hurting these other countries. Which is such a problem. And Juliet, I know you want to get in on this. I'm hearing you uh, agree with what Catherine's been saying. I want to just slip this, this piece of sound yeah. in. Uh, Republican Senator Bob Corker, he is filing this bill that would require lawmakers to approve any presidential trade actions uh, done on national security grounds. And Senator Corker is doing that despite the president asking him to drop this whole idea in this uh, apparent heated phone call. Listen to this. I talked at length with the president about it today. I mean, he's obviously um, not pleased with this effort. What do you mean? He expresses objections to you doing right. this? Right. Was he angry? Um, he's not pleased with the effort. Uh, you talked to him on the phone or did you go over to the White House? No. Uh -huh. He called you specifically about this? How long did you guys talk for? Fairly lengthy. Fairly lengthy. I mean, if, if Republicans are saying this is not okay to the president, how, how significant is, is what we just heard from the Republican senator? I think it could be uh, significant. I don't know how much backing Corker has. There are actually some debate about that. Uh, but, you know, significant, at, at the very least, you're seeing some life out of the Senate Republicans because they are really one of the checks um, on all of this stuff on uh, the president. And I think what you're hearing from Corker, obviously someone who's very involved with foreign relations, too, is just how damaging it is uh, for the United States to, uh, to dilute the term national security. This White House uses the sort of national security defense on everything from, of course, what Catherine was talking about, about the terrorists, to the immigration issue separating uh, women and, and, and uh, their, their children, to even whether we have transparency on where cabinet officials are going. Um, they often say, oh, for national security reasons, we can't tell you. The dilution of that term is very scary because when you want to use it for real purposes, when there are actual threats, uh, no one's going to believe you anymore. And I have to say, this use of the national security like exception wolf. in the Canadian case, it's, it, we're done. I mean, it's, it's, you know, like, I don't believe them anymore. I mean, if you're going to use yeah. this against Canada, how will I believe it for immigration enforcement? Or how will the American public and our allies who we may need when there is a real threat? And, and, and just to one up that even, uh, Trump has not only said that we need to have these tariffs on steel and aluminum for quote unquote national security, which is preposterous. Now he's suggesting that we need tariffs on cars right. for national security. So right. it, it's like they're, they're just trying to make it more and more ridiculous. Let's also keep in mind the president it will be in Canada on Friday for this G7 and how that goes when he's face to face with Trudeau. Uh, we're, we're of course going to be in Canada and, and reporting on all of that. Catherine and Juliet, thank you ladies so very much uh, for that great conversation.